This is the River Pang in Berkshire and just six miles from here it joins the Thames. So in a few days time some of this water will be filling the vast reservoirs that supply London. Now as you can see there's plenty of it and this is how the river should look when all is well. But a few months ago things were very different. The White Music Festival was a mud bath. Some towns were left awash by flash floods. And it seems to have been raining ever since. So what on earth is happening to our weather? Well, we've been told that global warming could have a huge impact on the way we live our lives. But is it happening already? Was 2012 just a one-off, or should we expect more frequent floods and droughts in the future? And I'll be finding out how constant rain can turn our beautiful coastline into a death trap. Oh, oh thank you so much. First of all, let's look at the facts. Was this year really so exceptional? After all, the British weather is notoriously fickle and we're used to taking most things in our stride. It's raining again and I've come to Oxford to take a boat trip on the River Thames. Joining me is Jerry White from Thames Water. His company has a special interest in this river. The Thames provides water for more than 8 million homes across the southeast. But last spring, Jerry's customers were banned from using hose pipes. We had two years of extremely dry winters, which meant that the groundwater, that's our sort of lifeblood that drives all the rivers, it, it started to recede. And we were really heading into quite a serious drought, even worse than 1976. But then unprecedented rainfall following yeah. which meant that the groundwater has really recovered and today you know the river's brim full yeah. plenty still falling from the sky <laughs> um, so so it's looking good for next year but it really was on a bit of a knife edge for quite some time how important is the Thames to the community around here is, is the, the water that people are drinking actually coming directly from the river yeah I mean within our within our catchment 80% of the, the, the drinking water comes out of the Thames. The Thames is the sort of lifeblood of the whole of the southeast, really. And a lot of the water is taken straight out of the river, treated, and then piped to people's homes. So fluctuations in water levels here are, you know, can, can produce a, a big problem? Of course. I mean, with climate change and, and, and the weather becoming more less predictable, mm. we're going to have to really think about how we manage this, because the southeast of, of the UK is classified as a seriously water stress region, which means that the amount that we have naturally occurring in the environment and that we can take for water supply, agriculture, is actually, it's maxed out, it's all used. We need to get customers to think a bit more carefully about how they use water. But we also need to think about where our next supplies are coming from. So whether that's building new storage reservoirs, so when we've got plenty like we have today, we've got somewhere to put it for, a, for when it's dry. Or indeed things like new technology, like desalination. For many of us, this year's unusual weather was merely an inconvenience, but for Britain's wildlife, the effects were much more serious. I've come to Oxford University's Museum of Natural History, and besides housing some really remarkable specimens, its tower is home to one of the world's longest running studies of wild birds. Some animals, the bad weather's had a knock-on effect. This is St Tiggy Winkle's Wildlife Hospital in Buckinghamshire, and I've come to meet the man who runs it, Les Stocker. This winter, he's worried about hedgehogs. They're just too small for this time of year. They've got to be a certain weight to survive hibernation, and they're never going to make the weight to survive hibernation. Okay, show me in. Six months on, and the pain is far from over for Jane and Dave Smeaton. I mean, did you try and save bits of furniture and stuff? Or did uh, yeah, you realise that at, at that stage we did. So it was all hands to the pumps in terms of yeah, getting what we could upstairs. But there's only a limit to what we can actually sort of salvage. Yeah. I mean, the water was coming in so quickly at that point. With plaster hacked from the walls, they've had fans running for weeks to get rid of the damp. This was our kitchen. No way. But why did this happen? Show was packed. We seem to be getting these events where they're very intense. 
So flash floods like the one they had here in the Bognor area can certainly put people's homes at risk. But for some people, the biggest worry is sustained periods of wet weather. And of course, we had those two this year. But on the coast of Dorset, the weather has brought danger of a different kind. I've come to see one of Britain's most dramatic landscapes. Loved by fossil hunters, this is the Jurassic Coast. A hundred miles of rugged bays from Swanage to Exmouth. The Charmouth area is prone to landslips and this year there have been more than usual. Geologist Richard Edmonds says the cliffs have been made treacherous by the heavy rain. The sandstone's porous, so the rainwater can soak down through it. It reaches the clay, ponds up, and causes the, the clay surface to become lubricated, and that's when landslides happen. And obviously the more rainfall we have, the higher the frequency of landslides. In the wintertime you'd expect it, but not in the summer. And this year, because of that extraordinary rainfall in the summer, we've um, obviously had a lot of landslides, a lot of mud, a lot of quicksand, pouring off these cliffs onto the beach. And that's a problem because of the tourists, I guess. Well, that's right. Two weeks before the summer holidays, thousands of people are due down here, and we have a condition that you'd normally expect in the winter when it's nice and quiet. If this weather pattern continues, is this going to all disappear? Well, these cliffs are a product of rainfall and storms, so when the cliffs erode, but obviously if we have an increase in really wet weather and prolonged wet weather, we'd expect to see an increase in, uh, in landslides. There's a landslide on this particular cliff that's overdue, and it mm. could be enormous, 500 metres of the cliff top. What we would see is the, the whole of the cliff top starting to trickle, the orange sandstone and the trees and the bushes and the vegetation trickling down the cliff face. That'll accelerate away until it's like a Niagara Falls of rock and mud and trees and vegetation thundering down, burying this beach by well, up to 20 metres. The heavy rain we've had now, you'd think, would be enough to make it happen. Last July, a young woman was killed by a landslide at Burton Bradstock. The British Geological Survey said heavy rain was a factor. In wet weather, the mud can be particularly dangerous. In fact, this year, 11 people were rescued in just four days right here on Charmouth Beach. So you may be wondering why on earth I'm up to my thighs in it. Well, I'm here with the Coast Guard rescue team who are hopefully going to get me out of this situation. Do you just pull? No, we've got um, a very simple but effective method and uh, we're just going to use a couple of basket stretchers, digging and the use of water under pressure and compressed air, the boys will get you out. Whoa, it's like being stuck in super glue. <laughs> it's my toes. Hooray! I thought I'd never see them again. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, thank you so much. Wow. That's unreal. This bit's really like having my legs back again. This happens on the beach quite regularly. People get stuck in mud like that and then the tide's coming in and they, they could be drowned. I mean, I was utterly, utterly helpless then and it, the feeling of relief coming out was just unimaginable. We had considerable amount of rain and it's made this mud flow, as you can see, extremely dangerous. There are hazards here, but they're perfectly manageable if people apply some common sense. You know, these areas of danger are in where the coastal erosion has its impact. Go down on the beach and it's perfectly safe. Mud rescues take place all along the south coast and if you do get trapped, call for help immediately and remember that struggling can make things worse. The coast itself is at the mercy of the elements. In 1824, the harbour at Lyme Regis was destroyed by a violent storm. To protect the town, £16 million was recently spent on sea defences. But even with extreme weather events becoming more common, it's simply too expensive to provide